Even now, in winter, the temperatures hover around 35 centigrade. The team ride as much as they can to cover more ground than they could walking. These girls are chugging along at sort of five and a half kilometers an hour, sometimes six and a half. So you, you, in one hour, you're covering at least one, maybe one and a half more kilometers. Each evening, as the sun sets, the strange beauty of the sands emerges. Next morning, there's a crisis for John, the expedition's medic. We're, we're letting Muhammad rest. He's, he's currently asleep. Last night, at dinner time, he was, had a bit of abdominal pain, which um, worsened a little during the night. I've been up to him two or three times during the night and given him some painkillers and anti-inflammatory. It's a deeply worrying situation for John and the rest of the team. This could be the end of the expedition for Mohammed. Yeah, See if it works. Okay. Yeah, that is mm. not just ordinary water. It's rehydration. Yeah. Okay. I don't think you're drinking enough. Okay. So I want you to drink, drink. Take, take the pill with that. And I want you to keep drinking that good. this morning. Good. Shut up with that OK. Very important. Reluctantly, the team decides they must stop and have a rest day. Yeah. Okay. Mohammed has a pain in the area of his appendix, and uh, that's caused us a bit of concern. So we've been looking after him all night. Has a pain in my side, my uh, stomach, and couldn't sleep well all night. And thanks for uh, Dr. John, who was, uh, gave me some uh, medicine, and I feel a little bit better. So we're just letting him rest today, and that's good for all of us, actually. We've been going for 30 days, and uh, we're all foot sore. The camels will appreciate rest today, and then hopefully we can get back up to full speed tomorrow. But they're losing precious time. As they while away the hours, Everyone knows the fate of the expedition is hanging in the balance. The team calls in a doctor from an oil exploration camp deep in the desert. After a thorough examination, he delivers his verdict and it's good news. Alhamdulillah, after the treatment, the treatment has been shown that this is only a sign that it will be in the area because of the treatment and the pain and the pain. With Mohammed on the mend, the team need to make up lost time and reach the waterhole at Turega. Thankfully, the sick camel is also on the mend. But they're using up the expedition's water supplies fast. Every evening, the team review their progress. Getting to Torrega seems to be taking forever, even though they're covering 30 kilometers a day now. Bukra, Torrega. Torrega, yeah. Is it an water hole? Not we promising could. anything. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, we're going to be trouble if there's nothing there. <laughs> yeah, we could go to a bailer. The long days riding and walking take their toll. 
For the last couple of days, I've been having a bit of a problem with my eyes. I'm not even able to read my compass through my goggles because it's full of tears. It's really my own fault, I think, by not putting my sunglasses on quickly enough. You, you know you're doing a long journey, and uh, so you have to break it down into small stages of little mini targets, and all the time you just remind yourself that whilst you may be tired, uh, we still have it incredibly easy in comparison to Bin Kalut and uh, Bertram Thomas in, in 1930-31. And then finally, five days after the last waterhole, 33 days into the expedition, they spot their goal. <laughs> It's a critical moment. There must be water in the well. And the water must be good enough for the camels to drink. When Thomas drank from this well, he became seriously ill. <laughs> It's a good water. Yeah. The water is zen, good. What? The camels drink their fill. The team feel they have passed an important milestone. Today is quite a significant day in the calendar of the journey, really. You know, for me, it was uh, very much a psychological turning point. Yeah. I would say now we're at about the 21, 22 mile mark of a marathon, and uh, the finishing line is tentatively in sight, but you've still got quite a long way to go. I just uh, remember how, how I will be proud when I reach at Doha. I try to uh, not give up always to push myself to reach uh, the goal. I know it's a very big percentage of the young businesses in Oman fail in the first year and they give up. I think they, uh, the most important thing is just to keep pushing find solution for the issues, and things will get better. After three weeks with the camels, the team are getting on with them much better. I can see why people fall in love with them. They're beautiful animals, and they're very charismatic, and they are great individuals. They have their own temperaments. We are getting much more confident in handling them, riding them, getting on, getting off. I learned how to handle them, to ride them solo. So it's a lot of things I learned in this expedition about the camel. When I'm happy, I'm happy. I'm happy with this, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this, I'm happy with Thomas. I'm happy with this, I'm happy with this, I'm happy with this. And there's more good news. My eyes have really recovered now. I've put, the, put on these goggles, which cuts the wind sheer. And uh, so I'm able to see, which is a great help when you're trying to wander across the desert and read a compass. In the evening, to celebrate, Amr selects firewood to prepare a special dinner. Desert bread. <sighs> grilled on hot coals. The smell draws everyone round the fire. Very good. Good, huh? Very good. With goat meat from a Bedouin farmer, they eat well. 
Their campfire that night is a happy place. None other than T. Lawrence of Arabia described the scene over my shoulder as the Arabs' uh, university. And, and he called it the, uh, the Hearth Council, because around the fire, news was exchanged, stories were told, and disputes were settled. The concept of sitting around the fire it has led to a unique program that takes place in Oman called Connecting Cultures, where each year, groups of young leaders from all around the world assemble and disappear into the desert for five days to dis discuss issues of cultural uh, polarization. We all need the time to step out of our busy lives and uh, reflect. I think the empty quarter provides ample opportunity just for that. I will never forget the night when I wake up and I saw just the sky is white. Thousands and millions of stars. I really love the place. After five weeks, the team still have 300 kilometers to walk. They're now beginning a long, slow descent towards the sea. The air begins to fill with moisture. In the mornings, there's heavy dew and fog. At dawn, the camels are cold. I don't think this is going to be the, the, the daily occurrence from here to the here to Doha, I imagine, but pretty wetting. It dries off quickly. The cool air makes for good walking conditions. But the pace soon slows when the team meets a new challenge. Sabka a treacherous, marshy quicksand. The camel's hooves sink into the wet, slippery sand. If the ground gets any softer, it could be lethal. Because if these guys do the splits on uh, Sabka, you'll never get them back up again. Well, <laughs> The team rely on Armour's experienced eye to help them avoid the really dangerous patches. Every day, they're riding faster and farther. They set a new record, 37 kilometers in a single day. Finally, the team approaches the rocky plateau close to the border between Saudi Arabia and Qatar. After more than 30 days in the desert wilderness, they're walking back into the modern world. It's been six weeks since they last walked on a tarmac road Mark knows he would never have made it without Mohammed and Amr. Thomas was the guy with the idea, I suppose, like me, but really he was totally dependent on his Omani guides and companions, and, and that's the role that Mohammed and uh, Amr are, pay, uh, are playing. Across the border in Qatar, there's a warm welcome waiting for them. The team are the guests of NOMAS, an organization dedicated to reconnecting young Qataris to their desert heritage. January the 27th, on fresh camels from the Emir of Qatar, the team finally enter Doha. A crazy zigzag through the streets, and they arrive at the fort where Bertram Thomas and Sheikh Salah bin Khalut ended their journey 85 years ago. 
Well done, Macy. Well done, well done sir. Yeah. Hard, hard to hard to picture this with the. I was just just looking at the original black and white photograph, and, and it just doesn't look anything like it did. But uh, other than that, absolutely delighted. 49 day. الحمد لله اليوم طموحي اني مرتاح راحه نفسيه يوم سلطه القلعه هذه وبوشي لبل طيبات وكل شيء طيب واخوياي طيبين الحمد لله وارحام الخاطر وشكرا على هذا المقابله lots of days where where we had to push and push and it was really hot days cold days wind sand and uh, yeah and uh, just that's amazing you feel when you reach there just the achievement you feel it's so good اكثر واحد يمكن اني فرحان بهذه الرحله ولانها اول سيره كانت تحت قياده الشيخ صالح بن كلوت وتومس والحين جددت الرحله هذه ودشنت من 85 عام ما دشنت حتى الان When I met Yusuf Alawi, the Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs in Oman, before we started, he, he said, you know, what your journey is doing, it's reconnecting people that at one point in time were never divided by political boundaries, and it was just one Arabia. And that was what really moved him. And uh, so it's been nice to connect those three peoples of Qatar and Oman and Saudi Arabia and, and the UK, of course. <laughs> The media record history coming full circle as the walkers are greeted by His Highness Sheikh Jawan bin Hamed Al Thani. Between them, Mark, Amr and Mohammed have lost 24 kilos. But they have achieved something remarkable. Right now, though, all they can think about is a night in a comfortable bed without sand. Two days later, the team are back walking again, a gentle stroll along the Corniche in Doha. So what do they feel about their epic journey now? Well, when I came out, all the things were difficult. First, when we came out, we came out to the sea, and after that, we came out to the fourth and the fourth. This is what I had to do for me. It was a lot of pain. You have to do a lot of pain, and you have to do a lot of pain, and you have to do a lot of pain, and you have to do a lot. طبعا انا اتوقع ان الرساله اللي رسلتها بتلهم الشباب كثيرين في سلطنه عمان انا اعتقد ان الرسائل وصلت ان العمانيين دائما يتحملوا الصعاب وما بس يتحملوا الصعاب دائما يجتازوها في النهايه young people in Oman need to be very appreciative of what the government is doing in terms of providing the opportunity through Outward Bound to challenge yourself. We've just demonstrated on our own 49-day challenge that there are times when you want to give up. Um, there are times, but, you know, positive thinking, having a plan, sticking to it, working together will yield success. After crossing the empty quarter together, there's a special bond between Mohammed, Amr and Mark. They understand how much the desert can teach us. The oil and gas will go eventually, and uh, the desert will reclaim what it once had, which is the, the total wilderness. And I think wilderness areas like the Rubal Khali have a great importance. Well, the Sahara means the region, and I am not the Sahara. It is the heart. Ya khair Allah waid. Tadrib b'ainak shifat tawid. Tadrib mir deshi. I think it's the most beautiful days in my life. I just felt more free uh, away from uh, my cell phone, away from the internet, and I had lots of time to think about myself, about the future, and also about my past. Uh, there is a lot of time uh, to think. As the Norwegian explorer Fridjof Nansen said, the solutions to our problems will not come from the noisy, rushing centers of civilization. Deliverance will come from the lonely places. <laughs>